Imagine you are on a sunny beach, wading deep into the cool ocean. And suddenly, you feel something touching your feet. You jump out only to see a slimy green plant wrapped around your leg. You get grossed out and throw this slimy thing as far away as you can. Little do you know that you've thrown something that is precious, is present in the food you eat every day and could very well help save the environment. Yes, that's how important seaweeds are. So today, we are here to dive deep into the world of seaweeds, pun intended, and see how they could be great for India and its farmers and fishermen. Welcome back to Revolution Read On, a daily podcast where we break down one story from the world of business and finance. Click on the subscribe button to never miss an update from us. Here's your story for today. Seaweeds is a generic term used for all the slimy plants and algae that you see growing underwater. And while you and I may not give it a second thought, it is a super common food item for countries like Japan, Korea and China. And chances are, if you've ever tried these cuisines, you too have munched on seaweed. But what you probably didn't realize while you were munching seaweed was that the demand for these tiny plants is set to grow to $26 billion by 2025 which is why India is also interested in growing it commercially. Since we are surrounded by water on three sides, we also have immense potential to grow seaweed. Despite this, we contribute only 0.02% to the world's seaweed cultivation. On the other hand, other countries, especially our rival in the East, China, are making billions by exporting seaweed to the world. But don't you worry, our government has woken up to this massive opportunity and allocated an eye-popping $86.8 million under its new Blue Revolution scheme to amp up the production of seaweeds in India. Well, there I durustai, better late than never. But does the world really eat so much seaweed? Will we find customers if we begin producing seaweed on a mass scale? Yes, because seaweed is not just a tasty snack, it is super versatile. Like we mentioned earlier, whether or not you're enjoying Asian cuisine, you're probably consuming seaweed every day. How? Seaweed is a great thickening agent and helps provide proper texture to a lot of things we eat and use. For instance, it is probably in your toothpaste, your baby food, your ice cream and more. It is also found in your skincare and makeup and has a lot of industrial uses. Plus, it is also used in the medical field. In fact, seaweed extracts were found to be more effective in controlling COVID than remdesivir in some studies. It also works as a natural fertilizer that can boost yields by over 40 to 50 percent. And perhaps the most important use? Seaweed can be used to create eco-friendly biofuels, which can help reduce dependency on fossil fuels. So, it's a no-brainer that the world wants seaweed and we want to produce it. And it has a lot of natural environmental benefits. It produces large amounts of oxygen, which supports fish cultivation and can reverse ocean acidification. Another fun fact about seaweeds is that it absorbs five times the CO2 that terrestrial plants do. Well, we can go on and on about the benefits of seaweed, but perhaps the most important aspect of this versatile plant is that it can boost the income of our farmers and fishermen. Fishermen in India and the world are seeing their incomes dwindle because of overfishing, which is reducing their incomes. So seaweed farming could help them and others living on the coast supplement their income. But what do you need to set up a seaweed farm? And is it actually lucrative? Most commonly, seaweed is grown on bamboo rafts. Most villages allow one farmer to grow only 45 rafts worth of seaweed. One raft costs around 1,050 rupees. So the overall cost of setting up 45 rafts is 47,250 rupees. Seaweed seeds can usually be collected for free from the sea itself. Wondering about how much one can earn from this investment? A raft of a size of 3.6 by 3.6 meter can yield on an average 
200 to 260 kgs of seaweed. Now, around 60 kgs is kept aside for the next harvest. The remaining produce, that's 140 to 200 kgs, then needs to be converted into dry seaweeds to be sold in markets. The average dry weight for seaweed is 10%. Therefore, with 140 to 200 kgs, only 14 to 20 kg of dry material is available for sale. Therefore, a single cycle of production generates 14 to 20 kg of seaweed. In a year, a farmer carries out six such cycles depending on the weather and other conditions. Hence, a single raft can produce 84 to 120 kg of seaweed in a year. So, on the whole, you can get a 200 to 250 percent return on your investment in a year. Though the earnings may not seem very attractive at first go, this could be a great way to supplement income at minimum investment, especially because it is not a time-intensive job. All in all, reports suggest cultivators can collectively earn up to 2,000 crore rupees a year. And their customers include huge conglomerates like PepsiCo and Tata Chemicals. But the seaweed industry at the same time faces a big challenge from climate change. Already, several farmers have been impacted because a major seaweed that they depended on has stopped growing in their seas. So, will we be able to fulfill our ambitions to become a major seaweed exporter? And for now, it's a wrap. Thank you for listening to this episode. We'll be back with more tomorrow. Until then, read on. 